Hello everyone, welcome. Hello Kovic. Hello. Hello Neko. I transformed into the box of the game. We are going to play. We are going to play a much better version than what you have there. You have the original okay. version, uh, the PC. I also have that one, but uh, not to make uh, around Kovic me a little enough. bit afraid. This version also exists. Uh, we'll talk about all the versions um, of uh, Shadow Man, and uh, we'll do that do, uh, playing the best one, <laughs> the mm -hmm. Shadow Man Remaster. Today uh, we start uh, a journey game. with uh, some of the remasters uh, made by uh, Night Dive. That one, the PlayStation. Mm -hmm. I mean, this one. Ah, uh, not once. <laughs> Uh, and um, we have uh, some of uh, their games on our list. The first one is Shadowman uh, Remaster, and uh, we have with us uh, the Kovic, uh, who is a world record holder speedrunner for uh, which version? Because we have so many versions for this game. For the PlayStation, for the worst version. <laughs> Yeah. For the worst version and is the best player. <laughs> nine chances out of ten. Uh, another speedrunner will pop into chat. He is blue. He might uh, not pop into chat. He might be playing Spider-Man. Okay, so... Oh, um, anyway, Kovic uh, knows a lot, of course, about this uh, game and also about this uh, specific release, the remaster. And... And I know check shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so let's, uh, I will be mostly reacting as a sort of game critique uh, from how I would review the game and take notes live. Yeah, and I will struggle uh, playing like usually <laughs> <laughs> I do. Uh, please uh, Your limit... words, not ours. <laughs> uh, I limit the back sitting uh, tonight because I want to try to enjoy a bit the game. So when I uh, having big problems uh, only, or uh, I, when I I'm, can't uh, back seat again, I have no jack shit about the game. <laughs> uh, or when I'm uh, missing uh, the Dark Souls, we agreed that we'll go to uh, we'll try to find all the Dark Souls. Uh, it's uh, correct the Dark Souls, no. I've seen that uh, you started playing Dark Souls after we played this one. It's normal. I mean, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, okay. Um, I'm playing the Bloodborne, but that's another game. We'll start the game. Uh, it's silence because uh, the game has an introductory which can be played only uh, when you start the game. You cannot activate it uh, from the menu, so that's why you don't. Uh, we didn't hear uh, any music from the game. So now I will start uh, the game. We'll see that uh, short introductory, and then we'll uh, comment more. <coughs> exactly. So now Jones is even gonna mute for this. Okay. To respect the wishes. For many thousands of years, the Shadow Men have protected the world of the living against threats crossing over from the spiritual plane known as Deadside, the place where everyone goes without exception when they die. Michael Lawa is the current heir to the mysteries of this ancient lineage, bearer of the Mask of Shadows. When darkness falls, he becomes the walker between the worlds, immortal voodoo warrior, taker of souls. Lord of Deadside, the Shadow Man. Okay, so this uh, was the short uh, introductory movie that plays uh, only when you start the game. Uh, so, the gist of it, from what I'm already getting, is this is going to tell a story about people who are passing on, basically. 
Uh, yeah, and from uh, what I've seen, the, uh, I mean, it's better to let Kovic uh, told us more because he knows uh, already the story. Yeah, but, I but guess... I'm trying to fill some dead air since Kovic. Uh... Oh, he's back. I guess it's specifically okay. about some Dark Souls, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> so, Kovic, take it away. What's this game about? In terms of story, let's see. For the beginning. Uh, I shouldn't need to say anything, because if you start a new game, you have more cutscenes. Okay. Um, from your then experience, uh, it's uh, you it's okay the brightness, for, or it's uh, too dark. I, I don't know. I think it's fine. Okay. Okay. Then. Uh, Otherwise, let... shout in chat. <laughs> okay, let's start then. And then again, I show. Uh, okay. What should we play, Kovic? Normal. Oh, definitely or... normal. You don't want to play the horror for okay. your first playthrough. <laughs> Otherwise, it's the horror! Because uh, on that difficulty, uh, enemies drop in zero health. The 9th of November, 1888. By my deeds am I known, and I am known as Jack. spring Jack, Jack the Ripper. By my deeds am I known, and they are truly bloody. I took them all to my heart, Mary Ann Nichols, Annie Chapman, Elizabeth Stride, Catherine Eddowes, Mary Kelly, and loved them, truly loved them all. But the immortal power I sought within the sordid confines of their bodies, the still beating organ of the soul, was not to be found. The ritual of the knife was to no avail. I am bereft, and must therefore perform that bloody ritual upon myself. Stay your hand, Jack, and listen to what I have to say. How did you find this place? Who are you? My name is Legion, for we are many. The immortal power that you seek does exist. It does indeed lie within the souls, but only within certain ones. Certain dark souls. My God! What are you that you can produce such things from thin air? Merely an explorer, much like yourself. What is it that you want from me? You are an architect by trade, are you not? I am. Then I would have you build a cathedral to pain. A place where you and I and others like us may join together. A place of asylum for all of the unique and misunderstood individuals that will follow you as the time of Armageddon approaches. And at the heart of asylum, we shall construct a great dark engine powered by souls of equal hue. And we shall harness their power to create an immortal army to punish and cleanse this pathetic world. And where might I build this cathedral of yours? Across the veil. In the darkness, amongst the restless spirits of those who have passed beyond, in the place known as Deadside. Then, if I am to join you, I must die. It is prophecy. We cannot fail, for we are many. For we are many! Amen to that. Magneta. I had a dream, Shadowman. A real bad dream. A dead side dream. The five are here. The heralds of the apocalypse. Beacon's file confirms everything I feared. The end's common, Shadowman. An ancient prophecy tells of the return of a great evil to dead side. A terrible force gathering dark souls to its darker heart and using their power to cross over into this world and bring about apocalypse. I must stop this evil from bringing about the end of all things. Only you can do it, Shadow Man. 
You are the walker between the worlds. I can't go dead side, and Jaunty's next to useless in both worlds. You are the only one who can do anything about this. As it ever was. But you ain't never confronted anything like this evil. It's so pure, not even the ancient protectors of the Dark Souls could destroy it. They could only banish it from dead side. They knew it'd come back one day. Hence the prophecy telling of its return. The power of the ancients is all but gone now. And the dark souls that evil desires lie unprotected. What you gotta do, Shadow Man, is to go dead side and recover the dark souls. Take them into your own protection before evil gathers them to its terrible heart. Okay, so let me get this straight. If I don't recover these dark souls, then the world's gonna end. Am I right? You got it. Shit. Look, I gotta go. I've got a lot to do. Take Deacon's file and meet me at dawn at the church on the hill. I've kept your stuff safe for you. I hate this shit. Just a pawn in Nettie's master plan. She moves me in mysterious ways. And brother, sometimes she really does move me. Can't do nothing about it since, nice as you please, she knitted my ribs into the mask of shadows. I got nothing left anyways. It's my fault Luke's dead, and mom and pop too. I deserve everything I get. Every bad thing that comes my way. Can't live, can't die. Dead side's the perfect good for me. A nowhere place. The asshole of the universe. Now where the hell is that church? Yeah. Asshole of the universe, what a tagline. Yeah. Something I already noticed is, uh, in terms of writing, they use a, a trick they use also in stage plays. Um, because people sometimes mm. don't really pay attention during stage plays. They tend to repeat or summarize longer dialogue. And you especially heard that when um, Shadow Man and the girl, I already forgot her name, um, <clears throat> were talking to each other, when we actually got a long exposition dump, and when Shadow Man says, I just need to collect this or the world is gonna die. It's something very typical you will find in stage plays as well. I could just start listing all the differences between the versions already in this first location. I don't know if you want me to do that. <laughs> yes, Chris, this is the remaster, by the way. Oh, and just when Kovic wants to list, his Discord crashed. Ah. <laughs> uh... Something, something else I could say is. That I'm... piano track at the beginning. Uh, but yeah, that, that's a meeting. And I was muted. <laughs> okay, uh, so we need to wait for him to reconnect. No, no he, he, he is already reconnecting. Okay, so what I want for the beginning is uh, if uh, when Kovic uh, is with us, uh, I will want to have uh, a short presentation of the port. Uh, versions that we have. I think we have uh, the PC version, yeah, the N64, he was about to. Uh, the Dreamcast version and uh, this uh, remaster, which is uh, available on the, all the consoles and PC, but uh, it's pretty different than uh, the initial versions. But uh, without Kovic uh, will be without uh, Knowledge. Yeah, exactly. I could say. Um, I think he's. I'm here, strong. but my camera is malfunctioning right now. It doesn't want to turn on. Maybe oh. just restart your Discord for uh, for a second. I already restarted it. It crashed. Oh. Okay. That's why I left in the first place. Uh, so I will become check for a moment, like Chris <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow. 
something I really adore is you see, uh, and I think something that's go, which there uh, words. What Kovic is going to say in terms of differences is you see that a lot of visuals got an upgrade, but the models kind of stayed similar and they remind me, especially Shadow Man himself, remind me how he looks in uh, the PC version I have to the left of me here. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I remember the PC version, but uh, this is clearly much better in terms of looks than yeah, what I remember. Yeah, exactly, it's exactly like I said. It, you see, um, and I think the... The, huh? the smoothness and the frame rate... Uh, well, the smoothness as in... You clearly see that the fray, uh, that there are more frames of animation present. Uh, well, they're all going to be interpolated anyway. Definitely, the frame rate is improved. Uh, the reason why it looks so noticeably better is because there's a lot of improvements done in the lighting area, with dynamic lights, dynamic shadows, and also colored lights a lot more than the original, I would say. And also like good post processing. Anti-aliasing is present. I think there's like bloom added and stuff like that. So it's in terms of effects a lot that the game is improved. Also like shaders and stuff. But all the assets are fundamentally unchanged. Although there is a huge improvement that I almost forgot about. The textures. The textures are improved all, all over the board. It's an option in the menus. They call it HD textures. If you enable it, you have significantly better textures than the original. Uh, texture settings. <laughs> I was about to say, most likely in texture settings. It, it's display settings, and all the way at the top, there is texture setting. Oh, they are on. What is this Dreamcast water? <laughs> yeah, I think I mentioned Let's that. Let's turn it on and see. Uh, briefly elsewhere but the dreamcast version has a completely different water effect and they included it here i don't know if it's going to be very visible on this water but when, once you get to that side and you have the water which is actually blood <laughs> you will see the difference clearly i think i kind of saw it the uh, the wave pattern is different yeah yeah that's exactly what it does basically okay it's more uh sea like in uh the dreamcast version like waves um i have one problem if uh, kovic doesn't f uh, fix the camera we need to <laughs> fix neko then <laughs> Because he's looking like... <laughs> yeah, let me see what happens if I try to turn it on again. <laughs> Fix the code, that sounds so wrong out of context. <laughs> okay, yeah, it, it's just not happening. So I can try restarting Discord like Neko set, like do it again. Or you need to fix Neko. Uh, I don't know what's wrong. Yeah, maybe if you... Uh, but uh, you can check if your camera works outside the Discord. Uh, if you restart the Discord, I mean. I guess uh, he already restarted. Yeah. Yeah, in a different app, the, the camera works fine. So, I guess I'll try to restart. Yeah, my guess is that most likely uh, some video drivers or ca the camera driver didn't load. It. Now I feel this is an edit section somehow since I played through 
like 30 minutes of the original PC version, either I have a spot in memory or this is a sort of new section. Uh, I don't think so. But uh, Kovic will uh, confirm. Yeah. Okay. Here we'll have a cutscene, if I remember correctly. Also, Chris is asking, so this was released on N64, Dreamcast and PC? Yes, because we don't talk about the PS1 version, which Kovic has uh, a speedrun record in. Neri? Hey there, Mike. Glad you could make it. How could I refuse your offer? How could I ever refuse you, Agneta? You can't. I'm simply irresistible. I hope you read the file I gave you, and read it real well. Between the lines, you'll find the signs. You got my stuff? Come on in, honey. You know, on the way over here, I got to thinking about these dark souls. If they're so damn dangerous, why didn't the ancients just destroy them? Because that's impossible. Their power is their immortality. If evil ever manages to implant these immortal souls into its monstrous slaves, can you imagine the carnage an immortal, unbeatable army will bring to the Earth? That's Apocalypse, Shadow Man. That's the end. Okay, okay. So I really gotta get to the Dark Souls before the bad guy. I understand that. But where do I find them? In Govi. Each Govi has been sealed by the most powerful voodoo. Not even the greatest Bokor or Mambo can open them to release the Dark Soul within. Believe me, I've tried. But a Shadow Man, or something even more powerful, just might be able to do it. Release the Dark Soul and take it into yourself. But be warned, the Dark Souls are a pure and ancient evil and possess a power that should not be abused. Okay, okay. Let's just get this thing over with. You got my stuff? Right here. Jesus, Luke, he's alive. Alive and in pain. I gotta help him. He's dead, Mike. You know that. I know, but I saw. It's understandable that you still have strong feelings for your brother. That's why the bear works for you. Connecting you to dead side. Use it now, Mike. Go dead side and find Jonty. He's waiting for you at the Merrow Gates. He's got something to show you. Okay. And Mike? Yeah? If you need me, I'll be here. Now. Go see Jaunty and get them Dark Souls. Okay, so I presume that uh, it doesn't work. No. Kovic. Probably have to restart the PC, which uh, is a bigger commitment right now. I don't want to do that. Okay. Then, uh, Neko, it's okay like this? Or uh, you want me to... <laughs> Move further. Your camera, I mean. I just disabled the uh, Kovic. Neko? No time to waste. Use Luke's bear Move me to the left. <laughs> uh, you want to be to the left of the screen? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's uh, do this. Uh, in the real time. <laughs> so, so as a joke, I, I I'm timing it. So, oh, like that left. I was like, <laughs> uh... no, 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 no. Look. Thank you. It's better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I I always forget that uh, when Kovi Kovic and I have the same headset and when we flip up the microphone I should just use Luke's uh, out of mutes that's a great feature by the way yeah and I always forget that uh, okay now uh, Kovic you can start to uh, talk about uh, the different versions okay so if I just list them off, right, the first version uh, to begin development was the PC version. That's the, the mother version for all of them. 
and so they had to make different concessions for different systems. Now the main uh, console that they were targeting after PC was in fact the N64, which is why I think uh, technically that port is in the best shape out of all of them. To fit the game on a cartridge they had to uh, compress all the dialogue, but it is still present. They uh, sort of... I don't know what they did with the music, wh whether they changed it to sequenced music, because the soundtrack is fundamentally pretty similar, in my opinion, although most of the music is pretty ambient as well, basically just apart from the title track. It's very ambient, but I think it's sequenced on N64, it would make sense. Uh, mm. And then the texture resolution is affected, but other than that, uh, it's very faithful. There's like super small geometry differences as well, I forgot about that. For example, in Asylum Gateways, you will see a pretty obvious like transparency area that got blocked off on N64. But yeah, I think visually the N64 one is, is the closest. Then uh, they were told, I think by the publisher, to make a PlayStation version 2, even though they didn't plan it. And so for that, uh, they had less development time than for the N64. So I think in theory the PlayStation should work fine, but it doesn't. Its frame rate is severely compromised. As in, like, perfect dark levels of compromise. Oh, fuck. And it has the same cuts as N64 in terms of music. And in fact, it has less voice acting than the N64 version. There's some voice lines that Shadow Man says during certain gameplay uh, situations. But on PlayStation, he doesn't speak. He says nothing. What? The, yep. In my mind, that doesn't even make sense since the play, uh, PS1, uh, like, was it Square that moved Final Fantasy VII to the PlayStation for that because here. the N64 cartridges were too small? Yeah, like, most obviously. Like, most likely because the fewer Oops. development time, like you said. Yeah, the, the PlayStation would totally be capable to of all of that because it has CDs, just like PC basically, but it just doesn't. I think it may be related to CPU problems, because that's sort of the actual result of the uh, less development time, right? They couldn't optimize the game properly, it runs like shit, and to air. save CPU cycles they probably cut, like, gutted the audio and a bunch of other stuff. Another, another victim of the PlayStation is the geometry, right? To, uh, have fewer polygons to render, they simplified a lot of the maps. They're also more significantly altered in uh, some areas, like the final boss area is much smaller, and sometimes you have extra corridors so that they can stream the map from the slow CD. And I think it's better that I point out these geometry differences when you get to those areas. Um, and then the last console port was the Dreamcast, which came out, I, I think, find the surface six months nice after all the other console versions, maybe a bit longer. And for that, it's basically just the PC version what? with some bug fixes. Something, like the something jump. drowned. Yeah, you drowned. I am the Lord of dead side. Oh, I didn't know this is a thing. So you died and he went to that side, which is what you were sort of meant to do anyway. But usually, like, or what I do, I warp there manually because I want to go there as fast as possible. But here you got there because you died. That's pretty cool, actually. Writhing, separating surface of the dead side serpent. What sleep is here? What dreams there are in the unctuous coilings of the snake's mortal shuffling. Weapon in my hand, my hand, the arcing death blow at the end of all things. The horror, the horror, I embrace it. We don't, that's too high of a difficulty right now. Ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. <laughs> um. Yeah, I wanted to explore more there, but uh, I guess I can go back, no? Oh, yes. 
I, I, I don't know if you're aware, but in terms of gameplay, I wasn't aware. That's a funny story. I, I just assume this is a linear third-person action game, basically. And then, just as a slow burner, as I started playing it, it, it dawned on me that it's actually a Metroidvania. That's one of my favorite genres. Metroidvania. So in this location, it's perfect for you to try the water toggle, I think. Because you have this red water here. Oh, I personally okay. prefer the normal water over the Dreamcast yeah. one. Now, now, honestly, it looks like... Um, what's that red watery drink with the, the grape flavor? Grenadine? Uh, I'm not sure, actually. Well, we call it like that in Dutch. Bloody Mary, what? <laughs> no, not, not Bloody Mary. <laughs> <laughs> not the bloody Bloody Mary. Uh, okay, I, I don't see anything here. <laughs> I can't see shit. <laughs> is it darker for you than for us? No. Uh, or is the brightness on my monitor Well, high? I also have that light uh, in my face. Maybe I should lower it a bit. Yeah, you should since I think it's gonna hinder you otherwise. Okay, so you are talking about the Dreamcast version and uh, we just uh, uh, shown the differences uh, on the water texture. Mm -hmm. Theoretically, like it should be the best one or from the old ones, or is not the yeah, case. In, in theory, it definitely has the best frame rate, although it's not as good as you would hope. For example, if you think to Soul Reaver, that game runs at lock 60 on Dreamcast, and it's the best version out there. Shadowman is not lock 60, surprisingly. And I think, I think the Dreamcast version, even though it came out later, it's still undercooked in some ways. Like, I wouldn't assume this to be an issue, because just drops in the most random places. It's not like if there's a lot of geometry, it drops. It's seemingly for no reason. Michael, and you also get uh, some audio issues in the Dreamcast version. Like crackling. Hello there, Michael. How's that treating you? Jody, kindly refer to me as Shadow Man. Michael Lawal has no place here in Deadside. Whatever, Mick. It's good to see you again. Seems like simply ages since I last set my eyes on your happy, smiling mug. The feeling's mutual. I suppose you've been away dallying with the old battle axe, giving her one with some of that religious voodoo so she can stay forever young? Something like that. She's been filling your head with her fated pillow talk again, I'll bet. Doomsday in an army giddy until you're drunk with the stuff. She did happen to mention a certain prophetic dream she's been having. Did she now? Well, for once I think the owl witch might be right. See that bloody big black tower yonder? How could I miss it? Well, old Bruegel, the medieval painter blokey, was just telling me the other day that he thought it looked remarkably like a picture he once did. Is that Peter Bruegel? No, Seamus, his distant Irish cousin. Anyways, he was quite shocked, so he was, at the terrible mess that bloody thing's making. Appeared out of nowhere and tearing its way through the place like there's no tomorrow. Which, given what Nettie's saying, might not be too far from the truth. Any idea what's going on in there? Nope, and I shan't be knocking on the front door to find out, neither. All I'd say is, if there's something wicked heading this way, it'll be coming from in there. Nettie mentioned the Dark Souls. Can you tell me any more about them? I'm afraid I'll have to reply in the negative again, Michael. Suffice it to say, Nettie's told me that they're bloody powerful, well nigh indestructible, and shouldn't fall into the wrong hands. Any idea where they might be? What am I, a Dark Soul travel guide now? I suppose you could try all of the ancient sacred places down amongst the whalers and shiverers. We just hope that none of them souls have ended up in that filthy big black tower. From what Nettie was saying, some of them already have. Which is all the more reason for me to be pushing on. Open the gates, Johnny. Places to go, people to see, eh, Michael? Just open the gates, Johnny. Did I ever tell you about the time me and Attila the Hun were playing skittles with the guillotine heads of the French aristocracy? Johnny. All right, all right, keep your bloody hair on. Which, looking at your shining bonds may prove to be rather difficult. Open, Sesame! 
And if you be wanting to pop oil in chatter oil, I'll still be here. It's just a shame we can't share a drop of the hard stuff together by a roaring peat fire. I don't drink with snakes. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I love the writing on Jonesy. Well, one minor thing, uh, climate. Could you just move your mouse a bit out of the way since it's annoying the crap out of me? Thank you. So, um, the writing is good. The line delivery is good. The accent, though. I love the accent, too. What are, what are you on about? <laughs> Armageddon. It's hilarious. It, 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 it's... I couldn't take it seriously sometimes. Uh, you don't want everything to be doom and gloom, do you? I'm having a good time here. This yeah. is the dead side, the wasteland, the nothing beyond the bone-packed gates. Here, Luke, my dear lost brother, wanders alone amidst the aimless ranks of those who cannot die. He still, with the ache for death, I too may discover within my blighted heart. Here, the true darkness at the heart of all things is made real. What we see in death's dominion is as void as a dead man's gaze, as cold as the light from a dying star. This cutscene is uh, only present here, I believe. not in any other version definitely not the n64 or playstation uh, i think it is on pc but i might be wrong because uh, i remember uh, something like this from back in the day <laughs> but uh, i could be wrong for sure uh, what i want to say is about the accent is i agree with chris in uh, what he's saying in chat it you don't expect such a heavy Scottish accent for such a character. I don't deny that. I just like it. <laughs> True. I, I, at first I couldn't put my finger on it. it was it Irish or Scottish? And then the penny dropped, but... Um... Yeah, what made you choose between those two? I would probably go with Irish. Um, because one of my favorite comedians, there, O'Brien, is a true and true Irish bloke, and his accent didn't 100% fit uh, the voice delivery and the voice acting. Now, maybe it. W it's a bit me and how I got trained in amateur theater, but I felt some lines were a bit, a bit edging towards overacting. But again, I I really emphasize in uh, on it might be a meeting. I'm not saying it's bad, but it's like. Speaking of voice acting, the, the German VA is quite good, also. When I uh, critique games, I I often listen to the other v uh, voiceovers. Um, but I only choose voiceovers I can judge. I know some German, so I could play some bits of the game in German. I know some French. Obviously, I know Dutch since that's my native language. And I know. Hmm, do I know English? I don't know for sure. But, um. Other voiceovers I rarely listen to since. Personally, um. It, it's the same why I don't. Uh, I'm unable to play Japanese games with subtitles. Um, unless it's a game I really, really want to play. Because 
I want to hear how the voice acting works and the um, feeling they put into the character and the emotions and everything like that. Maybe that's because of my amateur theater background. But, um... Uh, Kovic, I want to ask you something. <laughs> yes, please do. Uh, I'm wasting my time uh, killing everyone, or uh, I mean, they respawn or something like that. Uh, yeah, they respawn every time you die, basically. Okay. <laughs> and uh, so it's gonna be that kind of a stream with Clement. teasing you, man. Except, select enemies, like um, very big enemies. They don't respawn, but. All the normal enemies, they do respawn. So, okay. bosses, quote unquote, and yeah, mini yeah, bosses don't respawn. Mini bosses is mainly what I wanted to, what I meant by that. Is the AI a bit bugged or. What do you mean? That guy, it, it's almost like he was supposed to run straight at you, but he got stuck on that corner on the geometry. Oh, it could be. They're not, like, the AI is nothing outstanding. Simple AI, because they don't need much more, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, it's sometimes Metrovanias or... On the quote unquote easier side, with easy to dodge enemies and things like that. But then you have games like Monster Tail on the Nintendo DS or um, Hollow Knight that are um, ripping your balls off difficult. It must be said that the game will feel significantly easier than it would on the original consoles for one main reason, and that's the controls, the control scheme. Because uh, anyone who's played the original will know that all the original versions have tank controls. For a Metroidvania? Or for it's a, a 3D, linear... Early 3D Metroidvania, so yeah, they do have tank controls. For... Oh, oh no! Whereas here you have twin stick controls, so WASD for walking and the mouse and all that good stuff. But on the original consoles, you have tank controls. So on Nintendo, you walk with the stick, as in you walk forward backwards and you turn left and right. Or on PlayStation, you play with the D-pad and the Dreamcast plays like the Nintendo does. So uh, to fight enemies, you have a a strafe key and a lock on key, which is the same key. And so you, you lock on and then you can circle the strafe around them. <laughs> and in free traversal mode, you use the same key as well to like walk sideways or diagonally, let's say. But yeah, you can imagine how having to fight enemies like that makes the combat somewhat harder. Exactly. The the reason the first Resident Evil games are sorta of, kinda of difficult is mainly because of those tank controls. Oh yeah, absolutely. I restarted uh, playing this summer Resident Evil 1 and 2 when uh, my painter was in my apartment and I could only get into my retro gaming room. Uh, I played <laughs> Resident Evil 1 and 2 because I have the director's cuts on PS1. Mm -hmm. And yeah. The best version. Combat is a bit um busted is not the right word, but different because tank controls. I'm getting lost, I guess. <laughs> I was gonna ask, uh, how much, how lost are you? Uh, do uh, we have a map or something? 
No. No. From one to where is Brussels? How lost are you? You get nothing. Good day, sir. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm aware that I'm uh, backtracking now. <laughs> oh, Kovic, even he does get something. The global positioning, Kovic. <laughs> Uh, it, the game has uh, any RPG mechanics? Uh, not really. Okay. As in, like, you choose statistics and stuff. The only improvement mechanic you have is the Dark Souls. How much you collect it makes your character stronger. So it's... I, uh, I was gonna say more like Super Mario, but... <laughs> <laughs> not even that is accurate. Since you don't lose them when you get hit. <laughs> I did not mean that. <laughs> I meant like uh, Super Mario 64 with, ah, with the enough. power stars. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's it's like a pure Metroidvania in that regard. You have the collectible item and then uh, a new gear that gives you better abilities or more power. Other than that, there are no RPG mechanics. What is this? <laughs> That's one of those uh, the Metrovania things. You oh, cannot okay. interact with this at this time because you lack the equipment. Have you been here? I think I saw you. Uh, yeah, because there is no enemy around here. <laughs> yeah, I figured. Uh, take the scaffold. That, that's the way you should go in terms of progress. You can you can climb the scaffold, jump on it. What I find funny is how in this game he ledge grabs with one hand because in the other hand his is gun. They don't disappear let the gun disappear for a second to have a two hand ledge grab. See, the, the two handed mechanic in this game is very important. So, uh, they make sure that if, if you hold something, then you really do hold something. But you can unequip or holster the thing. And then he will grab stuff with two hands. Now, does it have gameplay implications apart from not being able to directly shoot? For example, if you want to use the rope, you need to not hold anything in your other hand. You can also have something in each hand, so you have two items equipped at the same time, which could be a pistol and something, or even two somethings. And some people believe that if you don't hold anything, then the climbing is slightly faster. I don't really think that's true, but... A speedrunner is somebody who can know these things. Ooh. And uh, you don't have auto aiming. Man, this is you PC. Do. Um. This is PC. Auto aiming on PC is. Uh... Like if you if you shoot in their general directions, Shadowman tends to shoot at them. Uh, I see that uh, I have an option and this disabled for auto aiming. Uh... Okay, so if you if you specifically disable it, then. That might be Most likely in configure controller. Uh... Uh, you see that classic controls option? Yeah. <laughs> it only works if you're playing on a gamepad, but you can actually do the original controls, the tank controls. Oh, um, please, I'm uh, full of it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just. Uh, I just uh, wanted to point out. Like, I think it's pretty cool. It's not 100%. A, like accurate replica because of what they did to the snipe mode in the remaster 
because here you can walk while in snipe mode so you can kind of sort of play the game like it's an fps uh and that wasn't possible in the in the original versions so if this is sort of kind of an fps maybe cv11 will do a video on shadow man <laughs> okay so i don't find the that setting maybe i was wrong I have seen only multi-targeting uh, on and uh, off. It's off. Multi-targeting, that would be hitting two enemies with two different hands. <laughs> shoot one, punch the other. Well, not a punch, but shoot one and then shoot the other with a different thingy. But for now, we only have one pew pew. That's right. Now, Coach, would you do the honors of uh, announcing the speedrunning times, or should I open speedrun.com? I, I don't remember all of them, mainly just the ones that I'm involved in, so if you wanna, you can have the honor. Okay. I, I'm. I hope my wrist doesn't kill me too much today. But so, uh, if I complain about my wrist, I sprain my wrist, and it's very difficult to do uh, typing motions. So, if you hear me groan or something, that's most likely because I'm researching something on my other screen and biting through the pain. Uh, okay. So currently on PC, um, it's gonna be that uh, cold, right? Yeah. Would you? Are you willing to take a wild guess, Kovic? It's like third. Wait, original PC or remaster PC? Original PC. Thirty minutes, forty seconds, something like that. Thirteen. No, sixteen. 16, oh, really? 16, min uh, 16 minutes, 19 seconds. Thought it was shorter. The N64! Who has the record there? Blue screen, 31 minutes. 32. <laughs> now, um... PS1, I, I have no clue. Enlighten me, Kovic. It's a certain Povita in 28 minutes and 59 seconds. And okay. 999 milliseconds, probably. Yeah, played on the PS2. It's For that sweet, sweet PS2. loading times. Yeah. And blue screen got uh, like three minutes more, <laughs> give or take. And then Dreamcast, no runs found. Yeah, no one's done that. And N64 emulator, no runs found. That category is kind of... I mean, I understand why it exists, but that's only because people used shitty emulators to justify it. Yeah. Now I'm looking uh, oh, for the remastered. Um, the latest version on PC. Who do you think has the record? The same person also has a record on uh, another record, uh, also a run for the original. Uh, oh yeah, I guess I saw those. Uh, it's Vaco then, but that's 11 minutes, I think. Now. Mm, well, on version 1.4, it's a Vaco with 10 minutes. Wow, even sub-11 now, cool. 48, but for 1.5, so the most recent version, it's Steve HD. And on console, no runs on any percent. Well, I guess it's and the same version for uh, consoles and PC now. Yeah, basically. 
Yeah, we don't, don't have drastically big differences like in the game Kovic and I do. Like, the Game Boy Color version of Indiana Jones and the Infernal Machine is... Um, a different game, almost. Well, you have huge differences in the original console's versions, that's why they have different categories. But for the remaster, they're all the same, basically. So, the remaster, on which platforms did it release? On Switch? PS4, My dive, 5, so everything. Xbox? Yeah, everything. Yeah. And I guess it's uh, 60 FPS on every console. Yeah. Even on Switch. In docked mode. Maybe not in handheld. Or it, maybe it just runs at 720p in handheld. Possibly. Oh, okay. I did something. What? Oh yeah, you made uh, yourself a shortcut. This uh rope, yeah. Okay. Doesn't obvious. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Something, something. I am the Lord of Dead Side. <laughs> For I one moment, you getting that achievement. <laughs> For one moment, I got the thing that uh, he'll say, I am alive. <laughs> no, that's blood. Oh, no. No, it, that In is uh, I live no, again. No. Yeah, but... I was about to correct myself. <laughs> And the exact word is, I live again. <laughs> and then he raises up from the ground. Next victim for the ever growing army of the undead. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Ooh. Maybe it's better Kovic uh, resume that info. So we don't uh, uh, stay too much reading. Yeah, my uh, so these I'm cards. A bit too tired of reading. Yeah, for, exactly. or this book, it's really cool. I, I think, in fact, what it does. So it's basically this game's Wikipedia for the game inside the game. I think at the end you even get a world map. It's not a location map, but a world map, which helps for navigating the paths of shadow. Was there no map? There we go. This thing. Okay. Which which tells you <laughs> Life what sight. locations are where behind what level of coffin gate. And the rest of the the book of shadows, what it says is or the book of prophecy, sorry, not the book of shadows. The rest of what it says first, it recaps the story and the prophecy, which means that there were the Dark Souls, and they locked them away, and then Legion came and made the Asylum, and then he's gonna get the Dark Souls and the world's gonna end, stuff like that. And then the rest of the cards, the tarot cards, are uh, item descriptions. So all the weapons and power-ups that you will collect are described there. Obviously, it's all cryptic as heck, but it is there. Now, you mentioned Coffin Gate. Uh -huh. So, what exactly are those? Those are just uh, like the doors in Metroid, for example, which you need to shoot with Weapon X to progress. Uh, coffin Gate uh, is those like circular structures that Klamath opened the first one to get into this room and then there's one leading out of this room that if you like walk up the ramp you will see it mm, I ought to go visit Nelly <laughs> oh that's also new in the remaster that he's uh, telling you maybe I should backtrack there something cool is gonna happen uh, to go back to the leave side or what yeah, yeah, that's what he's saying. But uh, up there, the circular thing, that's the coffin gate that you see. 
and they work it's... like our star doors in Super Mario 64. You need a progression a certain, blocker. A progression blocker that you unlock by collecting the Dark Souls. The Dark Souls increase your increase your soul level. Like every whatever number of Dark Souls will then give you a soul level, which is the well, you, you know, I wouldn't say it's the purple thing, but you didn't find the Dark Soul yet, so you can't see it. And the the Book of Prophecy actually also tells you how many souls you need for each level, because it scales, it's not linear, it scales. So for each next level you need more souls than before. This you the power of the Dark Souls. I embrace it. If I said uh, that on PlayStation you don't hear the voice lines, this is one of those. It says nothing when you get the next soul level. Jesus! Mm. Too hard to handle. Okay, this is for later. <laughs> yeah. Something, something Metroidvania. You have good gamer skill that you realized. Which was never in doubt anyway. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> Your words, not mine. Okay. How many times do I need so, to say, under don't undersell yourself, man? How do I go back uh, to the... So Nelly said that in the, one of the cutscenes, you have the teddy bear, which is connected to Luke's brother, I mean Luke, uh, oh, the okay. Shadowman's brother, and uh, that's what uh, does fast travel in this game, basically. Ah, and you have uh, on each location, uh, it shows the objectives, no? Yeah, that's a remaster thing, that it tells you the objectives, like accessibility stuff. Back in the olden days, we had to remember all that shit. I've found and taken a Dark Soul, Nitty. Its power is real strong. I can feel it surging through me. How many should I take? It is said that the Dark Souls numbered six score. Enough for an entire army. Keep going, Mike. You're doing real good. But remember, the power surging through you is very dark and very pure. Respect it. Now, Kovic, don't take me wrong, but does uh, does that lady not sound like the voodoo lady from Monkey Island? Uh, yes, I think that's the same accent they're going for, because voodoo. Yeah, like Jamaican, sort of. Yeah. Oh. There. Alive again. <laughs> I don't think you are supposed to kill those dogs. Well, I mean, they are hostile, or at least they will be. Eventually. And the only reason Shadow Man said uh, you go here is for that cutscene with Netty. Yeah, but this is Clement. Clement loves to explore. Uh, I mean, no. Yeah, to be fair, there is a little bit to explore here as well. I, I still have a, a butt in the other direction. I was... Uh, I was dying uh, before uh, seeing everything. Yeah, you drown there, which is... They like to use that progression blocker a lot, because uh, in life side, as Mike, you need to watch for air, but as Shadow Man, you don't, because he's already technically dead. So, there's gonna be times where there's just a long tunnel of water that you cannot make it through as living and you need uh, to be Shadow Man. And figuring out how to be Shadow Man in the world of the living is the first like huge progression blocker of the game. The first major objective. And I, I think... This area feels like one of those first progression blockers. Um, okay. Doesn't... Uh, I mean... 
I got the impression that I could make it uh, first time, but if you say that... Uh... Uh, I'm just saying it feels like it. Anyway, if I, I die... I can confirm like, or deny. Barely. It would be a good skill check from the developers. There's an area later in the game where it's more obvious that you just have no chance making it as a mic. And you need to be Shadow Man. So that's what Mike. I was talking about, really. My kitty is hungry. But how uh, do I uh, go underwater? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, at least, God, like in the original really versions, the swimming is just like Indiana Jones, pretty much. <laughs> I think oh, a lot of okay. games did swimming like this. Even Super Mario 64 did tank control swimming. Even though the normal movement wasn't tank control. Uh, yeah, you spawn here in like the entrance to that side, but you should have the warp point back into the Chamber of Prophecy, so you don't need to walk there. Which sort of begs the question, why did they bother with that shortcut anyway? Okay. So, we went to the dark side! God damn it. Now that you got the first Dark Soul, you have the first soul level and you can open that coffin gate. By the way, I don't know what you think, but I think in the remaster, the mouse control feels super, super silky smooth. Yeah, but he is playing on the controller though. Oh, are you? I just yeah. assumed WASD. Great. Well, I mean, it's good on a controller, too. But just looking at the gameplay, it's... You didn't quite notice it's... Uh, right. cool. And there's another coffin gate, and you can try it out if you want to have a look what it does. Something changed to my uh, weapon. Because no. Oh, yeah, that's the thing they do in the remaster. So, uh, as your soul level increases, you can charge up the weapon and it does more damage. Now, uh, in the original, if when the soul level is low, you always have to push the button. But in the remaster, when you have no soul level, they let you just hold it, which is super comfy, and then you get the first soul level and you're like, this is worse! <laughs> I just want to hold the button, why do I have to click? That's not the best choice they did, I think. But it is what it is. But later, when you have, like, I want to say at least four soul levels, charging up the gun is pretty, pretty nice. Unsalvaged souls it's... that drift beyond the narrow gates for an eternity of waiting. This infinite limbo, this wasteland, this untamed, Unnatural afterbirth, I command with my endless darkness. What ineffable secrets are whispered within the paths of shadow? What red edge realities rising bleak above the blasted skyline? Deadwing, duppy, zombie mother. This voodoo lord outlasts them all. Okay, the internal game critic wants to talk. What I noticed during that cutscene, you so clearly saw the parting of the enemies in that cutscene. Because they span round, 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 round. That, that, that's something I would write down in my notes if I would uh, write a review about this game. Really? That seems like such a minor thing to me. Yeah, let's just say I pay attention to details. And go um, really, really hard on minor details. Since sometimes I feel like sometimes the the more you skimp on minor details, 
the the more a game can have the impression of being unpolished. And I I chose my words deliberately very careful there. Man, it's so worse. So much worse the weapon now. It's, it's, that's the problem with what they do, like they give you the taster of having a good weapon and then they take it away. Whereas on the original you never have it, so you don't care. Uh, this location with all the, the pillars in the water is one of those that got uh, reduced in complexity for PlayStation. Basically all the water is gone. Except hey. for one pool. Because there is uh, like a tunnel that the water leads into, so they needed to let you go in the water. But they wanted to get rid of all the pillars. So it's mainly ground and a little bit of water and not the other way around. Lara would jump through that. Would she though? Because when there's an object like a like a model in Tomb Raider, it usually has pretty nasty collision. Like that Lara bumps off from air is one thing. I shall correct myself. <laughs> Speedrunner Lara would would go through <laughs> that. Now these red things are like uh, um, meat in Castlevania, I assume, your hit points. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, you are starting saying something about the differences between the PlayStation and the, the PC version. Uh, can you elaborate on uh, the differences between versions in terms of locations of gameplay? If they are. Well, it, the differences are mainly like visual or presentation because the gameplay loop and all of that is completely the same on all versions. They didn't cut anything uh, other than what was already cut during development, which is what was restored here in the remaster, like the, the big changes. But other than that, there is not like a missing level or a location in PlayStation or any other versions. You have all the same Dark Souls, and I think between all the classic versions, they're in the same locations. No, they are not. Some Dark Souls are elsewhere on PlayStation, just occurred to me. It's even significant in the speedrun. Uh, but it's mainly the same, like the gameplay is the same between the versions. Okay, I don't get it, uh, what I was supposed to do here. Oh. Not that. Uh, the solution is in the water. Oh! That took me by surprise. That when you took that, uh, that rope, you just collected uh, an item. Uh, Yes, I just realized that when Neko might have said the red thing, he may have meant a different red thing than the red thing I thought he meant. Because there's <laughs> multiple red things. <laughs> uh, sorry, I, I, I found it funny. I'll be back. I'm, I'm really gonna take a painkiller for my wrist. Uh. Oh. I cannot see it in the inventory, no? What do you mean? What I got, I mean, the red thing. Oh, you can, this is it, the Caddo. Ah, okay, but I have plenty already. And you got some in life side as well. Yeah. Now, the purpose of those will become clear later. Since you said to not backseat so much, I will not spoil anything. Uh, do you know the restored uh, 
um, locations. I mean, uh, to like be able which to. Ones are the restored ones? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. I remember COVID saying that was almost at the end of the game. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, not really. So oh. there's uh, what? Three, three restored locations. Mm -hmm. Uh, first one of those is one in Dead Side. It's a cut area of the asylum, and you go there pretty early. It's the second location, actually. And there's second some... Second quote-unquote dungeon. I wouldn't call them dungeons. None of the locations in this game... Well, no, that's not true. There are five locations in this game that kind of function like a dungeon. And that's two of those are the other restored locations, because there's uh, five locations, uh, there's five bosses Ooh. that you need to kill before you can go to the final boss. And each of those was meant to have a location, but in the original, they cut two of those locations. So, in the end, three bosses shared one location. But for the remaster, they restored all the locations. So, instead of the, the five like main bosses other than the main, the final boss. Instead of three of them being the actual bosses that you need to kill and two of those being like minor because you don't they don't actually really give you anything. Now all five of them are important and it it actually restores I think the flow of the game. Hearing you speak what? about Ah oh, that's unfortunate. Now, hearing you talk, Kovic, about the different locations and everything, I am getting Silent Hill vibes. I didn't play that game yet, so I cannot confirm or deny. Like, uh, where you need... It, since this game, sorta, kinda, is also a horror game. Uh -huh. Um... And you go to different locations where you find fight either a final boss or escape a big monster. It it, it, it gives me like Silent Hill ish vibes. Not exactly because Silent Hill plays differently. Oh yeah. yeah Silent Hill this is jump more is survival horror. Very tight, Klamath. It's not really intended, but you can go for it if you want to. Yeah. I, I feel like it's not the intended solution, especially because you have that pickup there in lava, so giving you the impression that the bridge is going to be erased. I can explain that pickup in the lava. But it's spoiler territory, potentially. Well, I'm I'm just saying what my my thought process would be if I was playing this game. And I can't be backseating because I I haven't played this game at all, like <laughs> first ten minutes or so to test my disc. And, uh, did the PC version run? Or did you try the retro PC? I guess that's what you did, right? Oh, my retro PC, yeah. Ah, yeah. That explains it. <laughs> and it ran quite nice, actually. Yeah, I, I meant like on a, on a modern PC, because uh, I imagine you would at least have to use a wrapper or something. Yeah, I, I, I played it on a uh, Windows XP machine. The one I also used to play Rollercoaster Tycoon 3, so it, it's more than strong enough to run a game like this. Uh, but the original version, I guess it was released uh, digitally also, before the remaster. 
no? That's a good question actually. I don't know if it was present on stores and then removed when the remaster arrived or if, if it never hey. was digital. If it was digital, maybe only on GOG. I don't know why I remember it was on Steam. The Jones shall go to the Google. If it was present digitally, I personally think it's a little disappointing that they pulled it off completely. I never like it when they do that. In, uh, in case of uh, Quake 2, they didn't uh, remove the original. Clement is completely correct. Delisting April 15th and 16th, 2021 on Steam and GOG. Uh, okay, so I believe that uh, if you had the original version, uh, you had uh, you got the re uh, remaster or uh, you got to keep it. I don't know. Uh, usually, when they delist games, uh, it means that you cannot no longer buy it, but the original, like the owners, still keep it. For example, there's people who bought the uh, Soul Reaver on Steam before it was removed and they still have it. They can still download it, just new people cannot buy it. The uh, same thing uh, Clement and I have with the uh, other great shooter called Dream Killer on Steam. Yeah, it's also like that with uh, Dark Souls 1, the Prepare to Die edition was delisted when the remaster released. Oh, and interesting. I can only buy the remaster. I have it, Dark Souls uh, Prepare to Die, and the interesting thing is that uh, initially it was uh, a game for uh, games for Windows <laughs> release, which oh, got yeah. uh, uh, ported to the Steam, and uh, I uh, made that uh, update. I don't know how important it is. I mean, why would you play the original? I mean, there's some people who still swear by the Prepare to Die edition uh, rather than the remaster because the remaster graphically changed some things. It changed the atmosphere a little bit because like, the original had different lighting which accented different things and it had a really strong depth of field which some people hate depth of field but some people found it very atmospheric and the remaster I would say is more neutral in that sense. Obviously the remaster runs like hugely better because the PC version was very problematic. Even with all the fixes that people made, it still had issues. And also gameplay-wise, the remaster has some quality of life changes. Also for some time, uh, the, the Prepare to Die edition was better for mods, but these days it's not true. Because people have figured out modding for the remaster and moved over. Uh, other game that uh, I have and was delisted a long time ago is the first Prey, uh, which is in our, uh, on our list of uh, future streams. Another game I can show physically, but wow. in my other room. But Clamat, nine chances out of ten, can show seventeen different versions. Physically. Uh, no, I have uh, I have two versions. Yeah, <laughs> physically. <laughs> you are right. Uh, both PC, of course. Uh, I have the one that uh, oh, has uh, Romanian covers. Ah, okay. And uh, the small box that I guess it was uh, European release. The the jewel case no 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 it's a small oh. uh, box not ah, big box it's a small box yeah uh, I, I am I, gonna mute myself because the pain of my wrist is uh... <laughs> but do you think he's shouting off the pain Okay. What's I'm the nodding. Point? 
that this platforming section is really dumb because in the remaster they sort of ensure that you have to do it the longest most intended ish way because they, they specifically disabled grab grabbing on the platforms even though shadow man should totally be able to grab it you just have to do it the way god intended and no other way will work um did you know you can jump off the wall when you're shimmying uh this is what i'm uh, thinking about but i don't know how right so i guess that's one thing that you would uh, find out in the manual originally yeah uh, so now you can like press upwards to pull shadow man up and then you can use the jump button to hop off the wall yeah when he's in this position you can you can jump whoa <laughs> what the I expect oh. it is going better. In the in the in the classic console versions, you can skip this whole thing, and because you can just grab the ledge that's like on the place that you're trying to get to. Ah, oh, okay. Because <laughs> you can just reach it; it's not that high. But they just decided that you need to do this stupid platforming section. I, I can't highlight comments for a bit since I spec is going brr. I think it. I think my wrist is a repetitive strain injury from work. Now, I, I, I'm gonna just state something that a lot of people might be thinking when playing a game like this now. Because of the popularity of Dark Souls, the game, hearing a game taking Dark Souls. As a story element, it Dark Souls got a bit too popular to easily disconnect. It's a tainted so... term now and forever will be. Yeah, that's exactly what I mean. Yeah, that's why I also did the connection with the Kovic playing Dark Souls after I played a few minutes of this one. Yeah. Specifically, I'm playing Dark Souls 2, the remaster. Well, remaster is like the cheapest remaster of all times, the scholar of the first sin edition. Come on. I still need to play more Bloodborne. It, it, it's a game I enjoy. It's a game you need to take slow. And it, it, it's a game that is perfect for just one more attempt, just one more time pushing through. Now, Kovic, try to answer this question without spoiling too much. I will try. Is in general this game as slow in progression and um i'm looking for rewards uh, you mean are you gonna die too many times no is this a slower game with this few enemies or will it increase in speed if you understand what i mean i don't really mean what you I don't really in, know what you mean intensity. by speed or slow, because intensity. Bloodborne is not slow. You're just no, no, gonna I, take it I slow. Mean Shed I mean Shadow Man, here. Is this yeah, game I going that to ramp like... up? Or is it going to be as... Late back is not the right word here, but... More call. Uh, 
I think uh, the answer to that is it's always going to be uh, a game that I think focuses more on exploration and platforming over the combat. The enemies are challenging, or can be, but uh, it's not going to be like a huge action bloodbath at any point. It's always going to be more about the, the, the world aspect, the exploration, what is it, which is what you want in a Metroidvania, I think. Yeah, otherwise you get more action uh, Metroidvanians, which can be fun too, let's say a Hollow Knight or a Monster Tail on Nintendo DS, but um, then you have a kind of different genre games. Which doesn't always mix well with horror, in my opinion. Anyhow, I can't... Uh, one thing before I let you finish, Kobe. Uh, hell, hello, Valdu... Valdu... Uh. Valdulo... Uh, 60... Uh, 76. Oh, yeah, man. I, I, I wish I could point it out, but... Yeah, risk problems. <laughs> Maybe uh, if I... Uh, I wanted to, like... Uh, man, uh, I hate I hate this kind of uh, enemies that are placed in a way that uh, force you to try to kill them before going there. <laughs> it, I'm, I don't like this in games. Uh, you can try the, the sniper mode to shoot it. Manual aiming. I was gonna polemize with you on, on Hollow Knight because I don't think that game is too action packed apart from the bosses. Right? The, the bosses are huge, but I think. That's exactly what I meant there. <laughs> right? Like, uh, the general loop, you spend more time platforming than fighting, I think. Was my impression of the game. Because oh. also, also, there are challenges where the platforming is the boss, like the White Palace. Oh, oh no, I'm sorry. You are totally right. I'm confusing my games. I meant to say uh, Binding of Isaac. Yeah, that's not Metroidvania, though. Uh, kind of, sort of, yeah. Binding of Isaac is kind of, sort of, Metroidvania. There's no points where you need abilities to unlock, like to progress, and when you die, you restart, and you have a new randomly generated world. It's a roguelike, it's not the Metroidvania. Am I that tired? I think so. My mind is usually not that confusing games. It could be the painkillers, I don't know what you took, but... <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> ju just a normal painkiller. Uh, I, I can't say it, but... <laughs> na names in English and Dutch are very different. Okay. That's uh, a weapon? weapon? Yeah. It's a club. Okay. I'm now, sorry. The thing, <laughs> the thing about make. this game is often the weapons also double as the Metroid kind of items. Like they give you some ability. Not this one though. This is purely a weapon. And it's uh, a good one in terms of damage, I think. I we have... pick it up all the time in the speedrun, because you can get it early, and it's very efficient in what it does. Uh, hold on, Clement. Could you turn back? Um, I, I just have a gut feeling here. Could you shoot a fire at the, that painting thing, looking thing? It almost feels a bit too inviting that it's placed so close here to teach the player something. It's not a bad idea, but I don't think it does anything. Yeah, it's, it, it, it's something I would attempt. First. Oh yeah, it's absolutely fair that you would try that. But it feels like doing nothing. Uh, with this uh, weapon, I don't have uh, infinite ammo, no? No, so all the weapons that are not the shadow gun, they use uh, ammo pickups. There are these like golden 
nuggets that you pick up. I don't know what it's meant to be. Uh, but it's, yeah, voodoo ammo, basically. Okay, you know, I already finished uh, <laughs> the ammunition. Yeah, uh, the, the voodoo ammo scales uh, just like your shadow level does. So the bigger your shadow level, the more you can carry, which means the more you can shoot before running out. That mechanic kind of reminds me on how the ammo mechanic works in the shooter like Power Slave. I don't... You know the game? Uh, I know it, but I didn't play it, so... For those who don't but know... But I, I recall it... from CV that everything is the yeah. same ammo, right? Yeah, sort of, kind of. Um... It has its... Each weapon has its own ammo pool. But it's all... The ammo pickup is the same for every gun. Which oh, is a like blue that. orb. So if you see an ammo pickup, you really need to switch to the gun you want. Um, I want to say something that is not related uh, with what uh, you are talking now, but in terms of graphics, uh, the step up uh, it's much bigger than uh, on other remasters made by Night Dive, uh, as the, as I remember. I I'm sorry that I'm interrupting you, but I think I heard Kovic crash again, so I think you will need to repeat the question. I'm or, back here. Or... Okay, so I was saying that uh, in terms of uh, graphics, it seems that this remaster is much better than other uh, remasters made by Night Dive. I mean, I don't uh, remember Turok having such a step up in terms of graphic quality on the remaster, for example. Yeah, Turok was uh, stayed very true to the graphics. I think they basically just let you increase the render distance, and that's it. Uh, the, the Quake remasters they have uh, graphical improvements. Uh, Doom 64 is identical graphic-wise. Definitely, this is one of those, like, I don't want to say more effort, but uh, I, they, they changed stuff more or improved stuff more than other games that they did. Definitely true. Now, the question is, is, is that because Quake 2 needed less work to screws up? Or they just put more effort in... Uh, I was about to say that more, but I mean Shadow Man. Well, I mean, for, for, for Quake, for example, it was very easy to improve things, because uh, the, the way they did it is they uh, recompiled the maps with modern tools. So it wasn't even work that they had to do. It was work that already existed, and they basically just shipped it. Uh, and then for some games they did, like, like Doom, then it's a different philosophy, rather than necessarily improving it. It was about... Uh, preserving the original as it was on modern hardware. Not sure about Turok though, what the philosophy there was. Money, money, money. Ah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm joking, I haven't even played the, the remaster of Turok. I think, wasn't Turok like one of the first games they, they even did in Night Dive? Uh, it was one of the first, I'm not sure if it was the first. Uh, it is the game that uh, uh, presented me this studio, basically. <laughs> Got it into my attention. Uh, the reason why I ask that is I, it, it's probably also a learning experience. The first game was System Shock 2 Remastered. Uh, okay. In 2012. 
Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Now I'm seeing it here. So, Strife Veteran Edition. Um... What's one of their first? Uh, Chorak 1 and 2 was um, their 4th and 5th respectively. They also did Blood. Which is still one of the best boomer shooters out there. <laughs> and one of the worst remasters they did. Oh yeah, I remember Civi complaining about that a lot. Although it was... I don't want to say it wasn't their fault, but it, it was Atari's fault as well. And GT Interactive. I still remember that that one line from Civi's video. And then GT shipped Blood 2. Uh, okay, Blood One I remember from back in the day. It was, uh, it has something uh, you can find strange. It had a patch for uh, enabling uh, glide acceleration. Oh really? Yes. Uh, and it's strange because uh, the other uh, games that uh, used that uh, engine didn't had. And it was something forced and uh, uh, strange. I mean, it was basically not a full 3D game. <laughs> my cat wants to play with the cold pack I'm using for my wrist. But I've played that uh, version. It was uh, pretty so, buggy. I was gonna ask, like, what, what, what was it like? Did it improve frame rates, for example? Uh, I couldn't tell because uh, when I've played it, I already had a um, powerful PC. I mean, I played it on an Athlon uh, Parton at uh, 3.2 GHz. So. Okay, so at that point, it was probably more trouble than worth. Uh, that uh, processor was okay uh, for retro. I had. Uh, use it for uh, Windows XP games. Yeah, I mean, like the Glide version with you, with that CPU probably caused more problems than any improvements from hardware acceleration. Because usually, like, with the, the early 3D accelerators, you got a frame rate boost, but it always cost something, like some effect was missing and stuff like that. We saw it with, with Quake and all those games, too. Uh, every time you move from software to the, the acceleration, because the accelerators didn't always support every every effect, it all, all it, there were always compromises. Okay, so I guess uh, I will ask you something to not lose too much time. I can uh, still have something global, to do here. Global positioning, Kovic. Yeah. Please activate. <laughs> Uh, because uh, I, I don't have enough uh, Dark Souls to open the door and uh, on the other uh, room is that lava thing I, I cannot jump all the way. So there's uh, like that big chamber with that uh, like altar higher up. Uh, if you go uh, past the lava room, there's, uh, there's a big room there and out of that room lead four tunnels. You went through one of those to get that that dark soul that you did collect here but there's more tunnels there so in this location at this point you should be able to find uh, three dark souls at least which should bring you to soul level two not should it will bring you to soul level two. okay for example, the, the, the soul there, behind, the, I mean, uh, past the lava, you can reach it from, like, the other side. Rather than jumping across the lava. So, that's one of those souls that you will collect. <laughs> and you can also find a warp point. That will be useful for later.
teaching. Okay, so I will uh, find all the Dark Souls that I need to open this door. Uh, you, since you're going, uh, taking the rope, I think you've been here, because that's where the that, that Dark Soul is. Uh, okay, it's not that uh, from the... okay. Yeah, you've, you've been here. So take one of the other tunnels. Which? It's just uh, the other uh, one on the other side. Right? Yeah, take that one, for example. It's always a good thing when you're stuck and you find a room with enemies. <laughs> yeah. shooting here and with the charging could have been easily solved now they could have um, which button are you using to shoot Clement is it one of the triggers yes yeah you could have have the charging mode if you pulled uh, the other trigger also no the other trigger is the other weapon this one so. No, no, I, I, I mean on an Xbox controller, you have four triggers, basically. And if one of the triggers is to shoot, the trigger above that, or underneath that, to there, charge... Mm, there are not four triggers. There's two triggers and two bumpers. Because only well, the triggers are analog. Yeah, yeah. but I but think... That's not that important. I the thing is say. that all the buttons are not available. They're used for stuff. Oh! Then stuff needs to move. <laughs> and I could have uh, just had Shadow Man lose the shot when the charging is over, and then you could just hold it forever. The problem is, in theory, you might want to charge up your weapon and then keep holding the charge and save it. Mm -hmm. And you would lose that. Now, is it worth it? losing that for not having to click all the time? I would say yes, but they I guess the developers didn't think that back in the day. Since how old is this remaster by now? I didn't mean even like developers of the remaster, I meant the original developers, because they matched how the gun behaves on the original versions. The remaster is, what, 18 months old? Something like that. Came out last year. Didn't it came out in 2021? I think it's 2022. I could be wrong. <laughs> you just ah. need to look at uh, uh, how old the Digital Foundry video is. <laughs> <laughs> the power of the Dark Souls, I embrace it. Uh, okay, so from like this area. Uh, there's a tunnel that you can take, which will lead you to the Dark Soul behind all the lava. Uh, down there? Mm -hmm. It's not this one, I think this is the one you came from. 
exactly. Out of all the locations in the game, this is the one I know the most because this is where you spend a lot of time in the speedrun. Especially if you keep resetting all the time. Wouldn't happen to me. <laughs> Was that some sarcasm I heard? Now, while you're finding the soul, I'll come. I'll go for some liquids. So, Neko, you have this game so for how many years now? Shush. Shush. <laughs> Shush. I mean the original version that you showed us. Uh, um, I want to show it again, but I don't want to move my hand now too much since my wrist is being silent, which is a good thing. Um, <laughs> for how long would it be in my collection? At least four or five years? <laughs> because I wanted uh, to ask you uh, why didn't uh, you play it until now? I'm well. Uh, I well because one of the YouTubers I follow, Catechorus, did a video on the PlayStation ports. And the way he presented it then, um, in his old video, he gave the impression that each version was like the PlayStation version and wasn't up to snuff. Oh wow, that's so disingenuous. Yeah, so that's one of the main reasons I uh, haven't played a lot of Shadow Man, and because I get distracted by other games, TM, TM, TM. Even games I really want to finish, like, I want to finish Tears of the Kingdom, but I get got distracted by a lot of other games. I'm currently playing um, on, on the train back and from work. I'm playing uh, the Neptunia games. Planet Neptunia on my PS Vita. And I restarted playing Pokemon Heart Gold for some reason, I don't know why. But I think Clement, you know, the same struggle is not the right word, but the same thing is as a game collector, to a certain point you stop playing 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 games as in finishing them and just play what you want from your collection um i don't know i try to finish uh, the games but uh, not all of them <laughs> i mean if it's a bad game i usually stop playing it <laughs> but, yeah, but if i like it uh, i uh, i try to finish it the, the, my, my goal always is to finish the game, but it might not happen in a timely manner. Is how it works for me. The word try was important there. And the issue with me is, uh, I tried to do the same thing that Kovic does, but as a game collector, I keep buying games and adding games to my collection, and I keep trying to add them to the list, and... <sighs> I have to be honest with myself, some games I'm never gonna finish. <laughs> Read. <laughs> and I also said that one time in an article, I have this strange thing after I um, reviewed an article, uh, reviewed a game. I sort of kind of stop playing it sometimes, just huh? because I feel like 
I did everything I can do with the game because I reviewed it. Lameth, this altar is a Metroidvania thing. You don't have the the gadget. Okay. Now, one thing that needs to be mentioned about difficulty and the resulting tension is that in the remaster, you can save very freely. There's even a quick save on PC, certainly. Uh, in the original versions, uh, there's nothing like that. You have the warp points, and they also double as response respawn locations so if you die you go back to the last warp or the last entrance which means potentially you do get a sort of Dark Souls-esque feeling where if you die you lose a lot of progress and you need to walk again all that distance which ramps up the difficulty and as a result also the tension you get from gameplay whether it's Difficult platforming or fighting the enemies. Yeah, the tension sometimes is not created by the atmosphere, but more by the game mechanics. That's what you're basically saying. Yeah, that's basically uh, a very important aspect of horror. I mean, uh, a very uh, loud horror game like Resident Evil does the same. With, With the safe ribbons. Yeah, you have the... Uh, restrictive saving, you have uh, not enough resources, and so every encounter with a stupid zombie is very tense. Silent Hill does uh, something very similar as well, with um, the more clunky controls, basically. They are clunky on purpose. Ah. Uh, it's basically the reason why even Doom 64 uh, gets classified as a horror game because it's just spooky enough so that you can say it tries and then you have uh, the gameplay on, on an N64 where you have to do the whole level in one go suddenly you have heaps of tension yeah and then but the definition is Annoying, since in the same way you can argue, start to argue that a game like Cuphead is scary. Huh. Yeah, that's why I think you need to at least like try a little bit with the, mm -hmm. the the art and the atmosphere, and then the tension will do the rest. <laughs> calling Cuphead, uh, call it, calling uh, Cuphead a horror game is is, is funny. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's where... my, it's in the same logic. Yeah, 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 I get it. It's like, it's a good, it's exactly like a, a good argument that breaks it down or deconstructs it a little bit. It's maybe the word. Uh, so, Kovic, why did you choose uh, the PlayStation 1 version for uh, speedrun? Uh... Because, uh, well, first of all, it was like competitive. To, there was not too many runners, and I found that interesting. But also, like, I got off, I put it off for the longest time. Because it wasn't that interesting. But then I tried playing the PAL version, and I found out that on PAL, I can jump higher than on NTSC, and that opened the game to a whole new bunch of sequence breaks and it's always very exciting when you're trying to speedrun something and you find new stuff you find new ways to break the game yes and then yes. at that point i i just had to speedrun it i had to uh, implement the pal version and i had to i wanted to beat the record because that was set on ntsc and i felt like the pal is better even though it may run slower on 25 FPS compared to the 30 FPS on NTSC, although it's less of it's less of an issue on PlayStation since it runs so shit anyway. But 
Yeah, I just wanted to like prove that the PAL version is better. Yeah. For the PS1 version, stable frame rate is just a suggestion. If you open the menu, you have stable frame rate. <laughs> Again, frame stable frame rate is a suggestion. <gasps> Today with Clamet, cooking Shadow Man. Okay, I should use the save now. I guess. Cooking Lara got too boring. If you don't use the manual saves, you will have the OG experience. Yeah, I got that, but uh, I guess it's uh, boring on a stream. <laughs> yeah, probably. But then again, he proved himself with um, Open Lara. Yeah, that was the original console experience. And besides the gatekeepers who say like, Oh, you need to beat the game like the original console experience. Fuck off. Let, let let people play how they want to play. Uh, if I would play this one uh, by myself, I would play uh, the original way. <laughs> because I agree well, my... uh, with uh, what Kovic said, that adds to the feeling in a way. True. But my argument would say, let people play how they want to play the game. If they want save states or quick saves or anything like that, just let them. In a single player it doesn't hurt. And if you want to play it like Kovic is saying, to add to the tension, perfectly valid reason. It's the same reason why there are difficulty options. Like, for example, I play Minecraft with the game rule keep inventory on. Personally, each time you die in Minecraft, losing all your items and gear, it feels a bit... too harsh? Besides, you... you, you start to spend time grinding your stuff back up anyway, and... Clement, do you think you are able to bind quick save and quick load to gamepad buttons? Because that would be a lot more comfortable than having to open the menu. So yeah, configure bindings. Configure bindings. Uh, probably use uh, some direction on the D-pad, I think as for quick saves and quick loads, because I don't think D-pad does anything. Okay. You would expect it would, it would be F5, F6, but no, F5, F7. Got it. Okay. It does something. <laughs> Oh, the camera zooms. Yeah. I thought it would unbind the old key, but it's Kex engine, so it doesn't. Okay. Oh, he's not a so good. <laughs> fix the camera, and then you can unbind the keys because it's useless. Um, which one is uh, this? No. Yeah. Yeah, but you need to first like go back into the game and zoom out. Otherwise, you will be zoomed in forever. Zoom. <laughs> ah! Yeah, you have a quick, quick save. If only we had in our soundboard now. La 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 la. Actually, if you have a mouse on hand, you could zoom out with the mouse. I didn't think of that. <laughs> okay. Because it's on mouse wheel as well. Okay. 
Well, otherwise you could have um, R the left and the right uh, L and R three are also buttons. I think those do something. I think R three is snipe mode. If I'm not wrong. Some button is a, a weapon wheel, because of course there is a weapon wheel. Because Kex engine. Or is no. there a weapon wheel in the original? No, no, <laughs> absolutely is not. You need to use the inventory screen. Now, what, what? I want to mention, uh, when we got to the camera, because that's interesting difference between the versions, at least uh, the console versions. I can, I can talk about those. Um, because on, on PlayStation, uh, you can rotate camera around, and to do that, you need to hold the modifier key, and then you rotate with the D-pad. But on N64, uh, it's done with its D-pad. But since you're moving with the stick, uh, it means it's not doesn't take away control from you. So uh, there's no modifier key, and you do it on the D-pad, and you can do it while you're moving. And also, uh, instead of having just six rotations, you can also zoom in and zoom out on N64. So there is in total 18 different camera angles that you can use. Shoot. That for N64. Yep. I think that's pretty cool for an N64 game. Yeah, that, that's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. And it's also, uh, funnily, uh, useful in the speedrun because there are strats that are affected by frame rate. And so you can <laughs> zoom the camera in to boost frame rate. That's, that, that, that feels somewhat trolly. And also rotate the camera to boost frame rate. So right, you have a direction where all the shit is rendering. So you rotate to look into a wall and get better frame rate, and then you can do the strat. That that technique is named calling, calling. That it only renders what you see. Yeah, provided uh, the game is competently made. That's a smart move to do. Got it. Not every game does that. Mm -hmm. Certainly not in the past. I think um, like the games that uh, work in s terms of cells, they can sometimes get lazy and it just renders the whole cell. Huh? Whoa. <laughs> Welcome Holy to Restart shit. Content. Side. Oh great! Oh great! This boy is glitchy. So this guy is called Vort, I think, and it's a, a, a boss that is not there in any of the original versions. Ah, fuck! What the bad idea? Is it idea? restored content or added content? Uh, I think it's restored. I think everything that's quote-unquote new in the remaster was meant to be in the game at some point. And it was present in the design document, but it was cut for some reason. Probably time, I would assume. Potentially also technical reasons. We may know. We may not know. Unless one of the original developer steps forward. Got it. But then again, your memory can become very hazy if you work on other games and... Uh... Yeah, it's been third, well, 20 years, 25 years. And see that whenever anyone from the Infernal Machine community tries to bother one of the old developers and then they find out that they don't remember anything anymore. <laughs> yeah, I, I have seen so many discussions. When Ender or Sam uh, bothered, I, I 
think we try to bother the guy who made the music? Oh, yeah, the composer. Yeah. And Doug Lee, we also try to contact the voice actor. Yeah. Shit. Good thing you can skip the cutscenes. Exactly. Even in the original, you can skip cutscenes. With one massive exception. The final one. It, uh, not the final one. There's a cutscene uh, that takes uh, place just before the final boss fight. And for some god awful reason. On N64, you cannot skip the cutscene, so every speedrun you are forced to watch like 6 minutes of cutscene. Nine Just for the final of, boss. 9 chances out of 10 they have like an array of skippable cutscenes, or skippable stuff, and they forgot to add it in there. And the worst part is, the, the boss is a huge reset point, because it's hard, it's actually hard to fight in the speedrun. Because you are so underpowered compared to what they expect you to be. That boss fight, if I simplify, the boss fight is the entire reason why my any percent time is one and a half hours and blue screens is 30 minutes. And not because I was fighting the boss one hour, but because yeah. I went out of my way to collect extra things to make the fight easier. Because I didn't want to... Uh, reset and die. Yeah, especially, especially if you're busy for half an hour. Or 20 to 25 minutes. I, I get so frustrated when I'm doing uh, an Infernal Machine run and I am failing in like a volcano or like in the middle of the run. Ah, I have once or twice chewed my controller out of rage. <laughs> what the because fuck? I, this, may not, this may not have been Shit. obvious from my explanation, but when you die uh, to the final boss, you get a game over and it throws you back into the main menu. So you need to load your game. So provided you saved even before the boss in a speedrun, the, the last work point is before the skip, the big skip in the game that lets you fight the final boss early. So you need to do that skip again, and then you need to approach the boss again and watch the cutscene again. So every oh, day. Oh, fuck me. Man, I quite frustrated. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> exactly. Like Shadowman said. Yeah. <laughs> well, you could conceivably fight it later. It is a Metroidvania. Can I fight it? Uh, I mean, it's not... Uh, it's optional if it's restored content, no? Or not? Uh, yeah. Um, okay, I will come back when I have better weapons, I guess. The spider web says no. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, this is just such a nasty jump to bump. Oh, 
are you trying to just walk over? No, oh, I'm trying to jump. I think you're bumping your head at the ceiling there. Maybe like this. Somebody discovered straight jumping. That's uh, very busted in the, in the remaster. Because you can actually bunny hop with it. Which is... Seriously? Yeah. It's the best form of movement, and you can sequence break with it. And it was not like that in the original. All the uh, animations were more rigid, so there was no way for you to chain them in any meaningful way and gain speed out of it. No, I'm not sure I can uh, backtrack. Only if I die, maybe. Yeah, if you die, you will respawn at the warp yeah. point, so... Cooking channel, man. Step one, cook him. Step two, enjoy. Yeah, it, this is what I wanted to say. I can, I have other ways uh, to go here than the mm, one no. I. Okay, then I need to go back. Soul level 2, you can actually go back into the Paths of Shadows and open some new doors there. Uh... And uh, on the ad on the live side. Uh... You get to do something, or I mean, uh, you said that uh, when you uh, find a way how to. That depends if there is an exclamation mark. That feels like um, a hint when from the remake where they say like, "Hey, there is something to do in this area." Yeah, it is I like that. So a wee bit of hand holding. I don't know if you can turn it off in the menu. You know. That reminds me when I was reviewing Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Uh, depending on the difficulty you take, when you go into the adventure mode, uh, um, like where you turn everything black and grey to see the points of interest in the room, if you're on the lowest difficulty, Lara just flat out spoils most of the puzzles. That reminds me of the the uh, like the Hitman vision in Hitman. Yeah. Uh, so, in your uh, speedrun, do you kill this boss? I mean, uh, if it is on the other, in uh, another location, you said. No, it's cut. I ah, it's it cut uh, altogether. Okay. I got the impression that you said that the bosses, uh, the location of bosses are cut and the, the bosses are, uh, three oh, bosses no, are on the same. That's different uh, bosses, not this one. This, small, okay. this one was cut altogether. Ah, okay. Uh, the ones with the location and stuff, that's the uh, not optional bosses, the mandatory ones. Uh, this one is cut completely, so 
the, there's no arena and the, the thing that he guards you can just go into. Oh, I forgot. Uh, I want to take a short break. Two minutes. <laughs> uh, Neko, are you there? <laughs> uh, I will take a short break, Neko. Yeah, I am. Um getting sleepy so it's not uh, getting it very long uh, short break is fine two minutes yeah so I can say some random shit what random shit shall I talk about um the fact I got this not from a garage sale but um from somebody who was selling his... No, not selling. On a second-hand uh, group, he was giving his CD collection away. And for some reason, this was in between his CD collection. So, basically, I got this copy for free. <laughs> well, that's cool. And on the bag, it's in uh, French and Dutch, which and something that always annoys me is when developers or marketing people put stuff in Dutch and they put the flags to show the country, they always put the flags of the flag of the Netherlands to show Dutch, since I mean here in Belgium we also speak Dutch. Well, it's like when they put the English flag for English, but Americans also speak it. Yeah, and Australians and New Zealanders and Canadians. Imagine they need to put each flag of each country that has it as a national language for English. It would be like... Yip. Actually, for English, I have began to see in some recent games that they split the flag and they put both... American and English La flag. Since, let's be honest, American and British English are, isn't that much different, apart from some word use and some spelling. But, uh, yeah. This version is the PAL version. It literally says on the disc. Requires 3D accelerator. Now, the only disadvantage is because I got this for free, is I don't have any instruction booklet or anything. I just have jewel case with the front cover art. Why does it say PAL when it's, when it's PC version? I don't know. Maybe because of uh, included languages. Oh. Yeah, but PAL should be related to the TV standard, no? Not the yeah. languages. Yeah. <laughs> but it says Euro version on my disc. Um, okay, Neko, it's uh, your call now. Uh, we continue 40, or not? Uh, 40 minutes stops. Okay, so... I'm not gonna get myself coffee here because, yeah... And then I would be awake for too much longer. And we I have another uh, another stream tomorrow night, so... Yeah, and I have, another, and I have a meeting tomorrow morning. 
meeting about some stupid stuff that could be an email, but... Sometimes people don't want to read... I just noticed the music, which is definitely different from the N64 version, and which... Into asylum, like a great black engine roaring to eternity, ravaging the already benighted landscape with its savage, malevolent presence. And within the legions of the truly damned, insanity, sheer and stark, and once in human form, now gutted and torn by eons of glutted indulgence. Their bloodlust flecking the oily walls, living in the shrieks of victims ensnared, hanged, drawn, and quartered by the serpent's squalid writhings. This is the place I have not wanted to dream of, and the dream is now the place I partly live through. Okay, uh, you are saying? <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the N64 has basically just one track for the Paths of Shadow. And it was not that one. Mm. So that that the... would be a consequence of the cartridge space and the sequence music. And the variance suffers a bit. Especially since they also had to use cartridge space for all the voice acting. It's pretty impressive, I think, that the game fit on a 32 megabyte cartridge. Kind of like indie. You would expect that it would be larger. But yeah, in indie there wasn't any cut content, to my knowledge. Nope. Actually, there's more content than on PC. More content? Remind me again? Well, you have all the artworks and stuff. Oh, for yeah. getting oh no, 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 no. There is cut content on the N64. Guybrush. Well, Guybrush room. Yeah. The Guybrush room. Okay, so one model and some textures. Yeah. Well, there is one cut. Yeah, one cut group. Weren't there two? Wasn't the whole additional Peru secret hidden? Cut in uh, N64? No, the Peru secret is still there. Okay, then I'm just remembering things wrong. It's kind of weird that the, they kept the Peru one, but they cut Guybrush. Yeah. Probably Maybe something... because of the model, because uh, if you have a model, you also need to have animations, and that's work. Yeah, and also maybe licensing. I don't think so, because it's all Island. LucasArts game. Fair enough. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm impressed uh, with the graphics. Mm -hmm. Really. Having Tomb Raider flashbacks happy. <laughs> These are much less dangerous though. They don't look like that. Are... Why do so many of these kind of games use this as an obstacle? Uh, Prince of Persia. Good answer. Uh, there are 30 FPS to movement, or is it just an impression? <laughs> well, you Could you be. have. I think there are lower frame there, still on the originals. You have on top of there. You have the FPS card. Can't you? Uh, no, but uh, 
some animations can run the yeah, different exactly. frame rate than the f full game. My brain is running at one FPS or one TPS, one tot per second. I, this is the one location I think in the remaster that has uh, like even more improvements in terms of the geometry over the originals because there's uh, some extra models around the entrance to asylum. No, no, I don't want to be that guy, but if you look to the top of the castle, I'm just gonna say it. Ocarina of Time, anyone? I mean the clouds? The clouds and the castle, yeah. Just look at Ganondorf's castle, and you see exactly what I mean. I'm not saying they stole or anything like that, but um, it just reminds me of <laughs> of that right away. There's also dynamic lights on the on the floodlights here, but the floodlights themselves they are in the original, except for PlayStation. This whole area is severely cut down in PlayStation, just because it's so big and open. So you, in, on PlayStation, you basically have just the door, and that's it. <laughs> Feel almost bad dissing the PlayStation so much, but it's just the game's fault. It's not the system's fault. I mean, that's the same system that ran Soul Reaver, for God's sake. And Resident Evil. Uh, Resident Evil is not really a graphically revolutionary title. <laughs> Let's not say in graphics per se, but in visual style. Since wasn't it one of the first games with fixed camera? No, I nope. guess Alone in the Dark was yes. earlier. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You see, one TPS, one tot per second. I'm, uh, yeah. I'm like, forgetting my, game, my Resident Evil is pretty reason. simple. Yeah. The funny thing is that I remember when I uh, played Resident Evil 2 and 3 because uh, uh, those were the first one for me. Uh, I hated how they look. I played them on PC and uh, I blame it on PlayStation because they are looking so bad. <laughs> so even uh, back then. And on uh, PC were uh, the old looking a bit better but they could improve the, only the characters the backgrounds wow no or the same at least since they were pre-rendered there wasn't much wrong with the backgrounds mm -hmm. i guess you loaded a safe Yes. Rather than respawn naturally, since it did the cutscene again. Yeah. Mm. Did I really expect to just walk right in through the front door? There must yes. be another way in. Boom. <sighs> there is another way in. This is a pretty nasty platforming section, actually. Oh, okay. But I got a hint to go back to the... Uh, get, that's for a cutscene with Nelly. She will say some stuff about Asylum. It's, it's like you can. It's cool. You listen to it, and you can warp back here instantly because there's a warp point on the bridge, the drawbridge. But in terms of progressing in this location, uh, it's uh, on the pi the pipes there. Okay. 
so basically a thing from Civi. It's not a sewer though, when it's lava, right? It's a hot do, sewer. Do, do, do lava sewers count? <laughs> Well, uh, I don't know if the new video he posted on his Discord is uh, Patreon exclusive or not, but um, he started to count blood sewers. Oh. So this would be a thing for a lava sewer. What game is or... blood sewer, by the way? Can you spoil? Uh, um, Turbo Overkill. Ah, I don't know that game. I think that's like a recent boomer shooter. Mm -hmm. Like very recent, like just came out or something. Yes and no. EA? Uh, no. Um, episodes 2 and 3 got released. Uh. It's that kind of a game. So it's not EA for early access, but episode access. Yeah. And it's not an electronic RT8. Yeah, I hate that. That's the, the thing that most people think of. Yeah. So, if we gamers say EA, it's always a gamble. Which one of the three? I call some games ES, holy shit. Yikes. Oh, now, good. Would, would you argue that this game sort of kind of takes place in hell? Well, yes, philosophically. It's some sort of afterlife. I'm really trying to imagine how this game would look in on the earlier consoles. Just by looking at the current visuals. Well, mainly the same, but lower res textures and flat lighting. And a bit less uh, fluidness in the animations, I think. I think the animations are the same, it's just the frame rate is different. And there is also no. per object motion blur in the remaster, which gives the illusion of more fluidness than really exists. Let's just say I meant to say that, but brain tired. I didn't even see that there. You didn't lie uh, by saying a very long platform section. Definitely top five. Oh yeah, I mentioned uh, before that the N64 has some simplified geometry compared to PC and Dreamcast. This is one of those, because you have the large grate to your left, and you can see a whole other room behind it. So on N64, it's just stone. It's 
so that you cannot see anything. So the, the N64 did have some small adjustments for performance sake, but compared to the PlayStation, it's almost the same. Stuff you would... I think you wouldn't even notice there's anything like wrong or missing if you didn't see the comparison. Whereas with the PlayStation, you can feel it's cut down. Maybe that's just projecting, because if you have zero comparison, you cannot really tell, but it's so much mm -hmm. cut down on PlayStation. Yeah, for the three of us comparing Indiana Jones, all three versions, it's it's uh, a cakewalk. We know the differences between N64, PC and Game Boy Color. Very impressive about Indiana Jones too, how the geometry is pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. Even on Game Boy Color, for fuck's sake. Well, all the geometry is different there. <laughs> it's, a, it's a different game, it's 2D. Yeah, but it 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 has it hits kind of the same My puzzle God. beats in most this cases. Truly is a terrible place. Like the note puzzle. PTSD trigger. I just screamed the frustration for the note puzzle app. <laughs> I hope we can open. Oh, okay. I'm sure most of the people don't expect that uh, this uh, remaster is looking so good. <laughs> Even uh, me, which I would call myself being. Uh... I feel Shadow Man is sort of an overlooked game by. The general public, correct me if I'm wrong. But... Yeah, even the remaster. Yeah. Definitely before the remaster came out, it was a totally forgotten game, which is interesting because I had the impression that back in the day it was pretty huge. Or at least like medium sized huge. Mm, it wasn't. I mean, I remember it uh, not being huge. Hmm. Huh. I mean, uh, to give you an example, my copy of the game was uh, uh, in the gaming uh, magazine level. Uh, and uh, it was uh, one or two years after the release, but I think it was only one year after the release. So I don't think it uh, sells very good. I had the impression from Nintendo magazines that the game was uh, pretty anticipated and well reviewed because for for a Nintendo console it was like nothing or like very few games that you'd seen before with how dark it is. I think it was one of the few N64 games that got a mature rating. Yeah. I'm thinking besides Resident Evil 2, I have a hard time finding uh, the other mature rate of game. Uh, yeah, I was talking about the PC version. Uh, I'm not sure about the N64. Nettie was right. They in the Dark Souls. The Dark Souls are mine. Excellent. <laughs> Didn't we come from here? No. 
then I'm... I think my brain is shutting down for the week. For the week? <laughs> Again, re to, to ready for sleep. I mean, to be prepared for the weekend. Right? Exactly. To be prepared for a boomer shooter. By, um... For, um... Yeah, I want to make a joke, but I can't find any. For Harut. Rot, it rhymes with brain rot. But is a shooter go- No, 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 let's focus on Shadow Man. I played a bit. Uh, because I bought it yesterday. I finished the first chapter, so... You said that last stream. <laughs> yeah, last stream was Wednesday, my dude. And yesterday I had a parent uh, evening. I was home at uh, 10 p.m. and I still needed to eat then. Oh, God. Well, I guess I uh, I don't need to go back, no? Uh, no. Okay, because I got the dark uh, zone. Yeah, so you took the, the other hole. Then... Was it the, the, the right one? Uh, if you could just make your way back to where you were. <laughs> oh, so I need to go back. Yeah, at this point you do. Like, I mean, in, I mean, in terms of progression, not really. But yeah, the, the the that room where you were, the yellow one, and then you took the vent, and the vent has two holes, and you took the the backtrack hole and not the progress hole. This would sound so wrong out of context. Yeah, you clearly notice that this is a remaster and not running on a PS1 or a Saturn. Uh, Although, another Saturn, Dreamcast. Yeah. I haven't played too much Dreamcast. Have you been here? Yeah. You got the soul. You fully know how strong Dreamcast is. If I were to estimate the Dreamcast, I would describe it as half the power of a PS2. Do you think so that's a PS1, a PS1.5. Well, you can't quantify it like that, because the PS1 compared to PS2 is much, much weaker. I think it's like 10x improvement. Uh, for which I don't agree. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's much powerful, Dreamcast. In some uh, occasions, uh, there are games that are running better on Dreamcast than on uh, PlayStation 2. Well, I would describe that as a software issue then, because the hardware is definitely stronger on PlayStation 2. Um, I don't argue that, I was just uh, saying that uh, it seems too much uh, half I mean too little <laughs> so I did the same thing no yeah <laughs> <laughs> We are running round, 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 round. Uh, yeah, go past the ca uh, cage and then... Uh, okay, 
more past. Sorry. Now left. <laughs> Where is the mini map or the map when you need it? <laughs> Idiot. Wait, what vent is this? You don't know. I don't uh, got, uh... Uh, they use the same vent, but it just has two holes. Go to no 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 no. So go back into the yellow room, please. Oh, I thought it was at the end of this hallway. No 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 no. And use this one. And now go forwards. Oh, that's nasty that I put enemies here. I forgot about that. This should be useful. What? This is a very important item. In fact, in the speedrun, it is the only of two items that we collect because we need it to finish the game. The other item that we collect is the Ason, because it's such a good weapon, and we need it for a boss fight. But the only, like, Metroidvania progression item we need is this one. Mm -hmm. I'm saying mm -hmm, but I haven't played the game, so I'm just gonna agree with Kovic then. Okay. Is this a weapon or an item? Or a both? Key. It says so. Yeah, but, but you, you have need the to key keep it. and things like that. Yeah, you need to put it into your hand and then use it. That's uh what I said when the, when I said the game takes the hands very seriously, it's like this. All, all every every time you need to use some items, you actually need to have it in your hand, and then quote unquote shoot it. Like use it with the same button that you use for combat. So I think from that standpoint, it's very immersive, the game. That was unlucky. Uh, you're backtracking, you don't want to do this. Okay. When you were in that room where you picked up the key, you unlocked the door. So you can now go through the door. Well, I don't see any... That's a real surprise, motherfucker! Ah.
the fuck? So, what are the monsters in this game supposed to represent? Yes. Just monsters, or is there some lore behind them? Or shall we discover that later? Uh, I only know the lore behind one of the enemies, and these guys are not it. Yes. So I'm afraid I cannot answer, because I have not a clue. For complete crazies, these guys are totally organized, which definitely helps me some. Now, if we don't mind to wrap up here, because okay. I'm, I'm close to nodding off. <laughs> but I will save uh, here too. Yeah, I, I think this is a fair exit point. Okay. Fair enough. I hope that next week is a little bit less busy so I can uh, have uh, that we can have a longer stream. So apologies for that. Uh, yeah, but uh, for me, in the priest in the priest stream, we all s the three of us said together basically the same thing. We are exhausted from the first school week, so. Uh, Uh, for me, next week uh, it's uh, much busier, so I will not be able to do midweek streams. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't have any content for them. I think agreed, so it doesn't matter anyway. Yeah, <laughs> just saying. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, so I guess we didn't do too much progress. We this is uh, because of me i didn't want uh, too much help this time i enjoyed and the you game don't want to rush so let's enjoy our time with the shadow man yeah uh, it's a nice game and uh, i will tell it again it's a surprise for me how better it looks uh, compared to what i remember from the PC version I played back in the day. And yeah. uh, tomorrow evening uh, we'll start another game. Hrot. Huh? Nice. <laughs> Hrot. Uh, and again, it's a game that uh, Kovic uh, speedrun and uh, has the world record for that game. And, uh, and moderates, if I'm correct. And uh, another thing is that uh, its uh, story is in uh, his country, the story of the game. Mm -hmm. So exactly. we'll have one uh, more trivia, I guess. Even if I think that uh, everything that is in Czech, it's, uh, I mean, uh, written in Czech throughout the game, it's uh, translated. Yeah, it has subtitles. I have. Yeah, there are subtitles. I think. Uh, what's going to be more interesting is uh, like the, the explanation, right? You can lead, read the words, but you're still going to be confused, I think, sometimes. Yes, there are some. <laughs> but, yeah, I was confused sometimes. And some, like, Wednesday in pre-stream, I said to Kovic, Man, that one mini boss was like, what? But it shall all be revealed tomorrow. Exactly. So uh, tomorrow, uh, for everyone that uh, um, lived through the communist era, you'll have some PSD. <laughs> because um, I've seen uh, I've seen the flag uh, with the Soviet flag. Uh, like uh, covering the Czech club flag, something like that. <laughs> like swallowing the flag, uh, Czech flag. It was uh, an interesting image. Very poetic for that, uh, for what happened uh, in the Eastern Europe uh, back in the day. But we'll yeah. talk uh, more tomorrow evening. Mm -hmm. uh, this is it with uh, this stream. We have uh, exactly three hours. <laughs> now Excellent. and uh, we'll see you tomorrow evening bye bye
Good night. Bye, guys. Bye. Girls. Bye.